Hey, what's going on guys? Pete with Auto Repair Tips. Today I'm working on a 66 Classic F100. Back in 2013, we had the privilege of restoring this vehicle. We made a daily driver for him. It looks as good today as it did back then. This guy drives this car every single day. It stays outside in the weather uncovered and it still looks good. But his biggest complaint now is when he hits the brake, it doesn't stop. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what we did to diagnose this brake system on this classic truck. Let's go ahead and go for our test drive. Guys, if you're a motorhead like me and you love working on your own cars, you found the right channel consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that bell for notifications all right let's get into the video all right guys i was getting ready to go on my test drive hopped in the car threw in gear put my foot on the brake my foot went straight to the floor this truck is not safe to drive on the road so the first thing i'm gonna do is check the master cylinder i got a hunch we're not gonna find any fluid in there at all because i got suspected bone dry and dirty. Look at that. This fluid is black. All right, guys, let's check out the wheel cylinders. Let's make sure they're not leaking. All right, let's see what we got. To get the nut off, you're gonna have to remove the car key. It's like a lock washer. It, it'll go around your nut and the car key will go in between the teeth. Helps secure it on. So a common mistake a lot of people make when they're putting this hub bolt on there, they over torque it and then the drum don't turn. The way I do it is I hand tighten it up, I get my pliers, I tighten up just enough to where the drum don't move, then I back it off a little bit make sure it moves the last time this car was in here we went through the brake system on it it's been a few years i think the bearings just need to be re repacking they look good this man uses this car as a daily driver looking at the brakes they look fat think about this the last time i did this truck was in 2013 like i was telling you earlier and they look like they're brand new i'm gonna go ahead and get the front bearing repacked with some grease get it back on there and we'll move on to the back Lines still look good. All right, let's start at the back here, looking at the lines. Looking along the rail. That brake line looks pretty good. I don't see anything seeping here. He's got a gearbox leaking. I'll let him know about that and see if he wants to do that while it's here also. All right, guys, after going over this truck front to rear, I checked all the wheel cylinders, the brake lines, the master cylinder. Didn't see anything obviously leaking anywhere. But we're gonna go ahead and replace that master cylinder and flush the lines out. Because inside the master cylinder, there wasn't any fluid, it was gummy and black. So to be on the safe side, we're gonna flush these lines and replace that master cylinder and go from there. All right, we just got the master cylinder in. I ordered it from Advanced Auto Parts, ordered it online, it was here in one day. This master cylinder fits a lot of different vehicles. Here's the part number to it. You can actually run that on their website and it even tells you what it fits. I'll put links in the description to where you can get this master cylinder at. Anytime you purchase something through any of those links, a small portion helps the channel and I appreciate that. All right, let's get this thing installed. Before you unbolt the master cylinder, you wanna go ahead and take the brake lines off. It's easier to do that on the car. These lines, especially with age, they can bend on you and twist and break. So with the master cylinder bolted up, this line is not gonna twist all around. When you're working with brake lines, make sure you use line wrenches 
This way you don't strip the nuts. If you use a regular wrench, you're 90% chance you're gonna strip those nuts. If you look at the fluid coming out, it's black. Next, you wanna go ahead and take off the sensor. inside the brake, if you look inside the master cylinder, you can see all the sludge dirt, how dirty the fluid is. Look at the buildup of sludge. That's from years of never being changed. You should always try to flush your brake fluid on any vehicle every so many years. Check your owner's manual or online to see when your vehicle requires it. Because if you don't, this is what's gonna happen to you. All right, when you're putting a new master cylinder in, this boot's a little tight around the rod. Yeah, just push it. If you have a friend, it really helps out. And I put a little bit of caliper grease just on that stud right there, just to help, just to help it push on. But once it goes on, okay, it's there. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Give me two minutes to screw it up and I'll help you out. It's always nice if you have somebody to help you. Sometimes it just makes things a little bit easier. Now when we go to flush this brake lines out, we're gonna start at the right rear, the furthest wheel away. And I've got a tool that you hook to it and we'll fill the master cylinder up and we'll turn the tool on and it'll just suck it until the fluids all comes out clean. Then we'll go to the left rear, then we'll do the right front and the left front last. A lot of people say you should bench bleed these first. I don't bench bleed them, I don't really see a need to. When I hook these lines up, and I pull it through, it takes all the air out and it's just as easy as bench bleeding. We used to bench bleed a long time ago. That's before we had all these tools. Now with the proper tools, you really can eliminate that step. Some people bench bleed and then use the correct tools also, but that's wasting time. It is not necessary. Always start these by hand. You don't want to take a chance in cross-threading. This is one of these times when things are going so smooth that you tell yourself, okay, when is it going to start When you're working with older cars, nothing seems to really go this smooth. I'm getting a little worried now. This is probably the best set of pliers that I've ever purchased. These things, the way they're designed, when you grip on something, it's a square fit. And when it clamps on, it is not coming off. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put brake fluid in the massive cylinder. This is what brake fluid should look like. Nice and clean, just like that. If you have excessive black brake fluid, that is not a good sign. All right, we're gonna fill it up like that. Make sure when you're using brake fluid, be careful. You don't wanna get it on your paint. It can harm your paint. All right, let's get this car up in the air just a little bit so I can start bleeding the system. Well, I guess it spoke too soon. Started to bleed the rear brakes and just a little bit of fluid came out, then it stopped. Same thing with the left side. So I had to go up front and I checked the tires up front here. I went to the Right front, it bled fine. I went to the left front, it bled fine. So 
I went to the proportional valve, checked it there, had fluid coming out there. I had fluid coming out here, right at the rear brake line where it goes into the rubber hose. But nothing coming out here. So what's happened is this rubber hose has gotten hard and came apart in the inside. So I went ahead and ordered one. As soon as it gets here, we'll get it put in and then we'll start like we're supposed to. Right rear, left rear, right front, left front, and we'll get them all bled. As soon as the parts get here, I'll get it installed and we'll get to work. All right, we just got the brake line in. Gonna get this thing installed. Here's the part number to the brake line. And again, I'll have links in the description below to all the parts I use on this car. This is your vent tube for the rear end. You unscrew this and that line will come off this way. It's a lot easier to remove these two brake lines if you loosen this up, raise that up a little bit, then go ahead and crack it loose. That's your vent for your rear end. It's supposed to have a hose on it. When we go back with it, we're gonna put a hose on it and wire tie it up out of the way. There's a clip that holds the rubber line in, but before you remove that clip, same thing as we did over here, go ahead and break your line loose. And as you can see, we have fluid coming out here, and there was no fluid coming out the other end of this. All right, if you take the new brake line and blow through it, you can hear the air coming out. Take the old brake line. I don't recommend doing this at home. I've just been doing it for so many years that I think my taste buds are gone. But you blow through this one, and there's nothing. And if you look at the line, you can see it's hard, brittle, and cracking. So it's coming apart on the inside, not letting the fluid flow through. Yeah, the uh, bifocals are but they're the most expensive glasses I've ever owned. Yeah. I cannot wear those. I have to get mine separate. Yeah, well, it's like the lady said, though. You know, I use it so much between up and down, but they're supposed to be like non-slip, non-fog. She's full of crap. There's, I had nothing but issues with these glasses. There we go. Now we're looking good. Make sure before you bolt the brake line to the rear end, start your brake lines. It gives you the opportunity to move it around a little bit and start them by hand so you don't cross thread nothing. Once you get them started, then you can put the bolt in here and get this started. Like before, don't tighten this all the way up. Just get a few turns on it so you can raise it up. It's easier to get this line wrench on. All right, keep our fingers crossed and hopefully that's the last piece we have to replace on this truck. I'm gonna go up here and check the brake fluid. Let's make sure we got brake fluid in it. We'll hook the tool back up and hopefully we get some fluid out the rear. All right, we're going to need to add some fluid. All right, we're back to square one. Let's get this tool hooked up. Let's get some air to it. Let's see if we can get some fluid out of this thing now. Nice, that's what I want to see. We'll do the same procedure on all four wheels until we have clear fluid coming out of every one. All right guys, let me finish getting this thing bled. We'll go for our test drive and see how it does. All right guys, we are on our test drive and we're gonna give these brakes a test right now. All right. All right guys, this thing stopped on a dime. All four wheels locked up. It didn't pull right or didn't pull left. That means the wheel cylinders are getting the correct amount of fluid to each one when you apply the brakes. They're adjusted correctly. There's no restriction. This thing is good to go. Hey, what's going on guys? Pete with Auto Pair Tips. Well, I've got some exciting news to tell you. I've been looking for a technician now for about six months. Well, I think the search is over. I finally found somebody I think is going to fit in just fine. Guys, welcome Dave. 
a new member to auto repair tips. Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Dave with Auto Repair Tips. And Hold in on, this Dave. video, this is your first video. That's my line. Right this minute, just take a second and go get me a cup of coffee. All right guys, that's it for this video. Appreciate you watching. Catch you later.